Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing well. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about a very important topic which is how to write a CDR report. And I would like to begin the video with explaining to you guys what CDR means and how important it is in the process of applying for your permanent residency. So let's get started. So CDR report is competency demonstration report which is a technical document that you will be submitting to Engineers Australia. And uh, what Engineers Australia is nothing but uh, it is uh, like the main authority in Australia designed specially for engineers. So when you submit them the documents um, like the CDR reports to them, what they will do is they will examine those reports and determine if you can be an asset to the field of engineering in Australia. So it's more like, uh, you know, proving your worth and proving the quality of work that you have done in the past. So once uh, they assess your documents, depending on the different grades that you're going to be applying for, you will get points as per the quality of reports that you have submitted. So in my case, I got 15 points from Engineers Australia because I applied as a professional engineer and, and I got 15 points. So let's talk about how important a CDR report is when it comes to your PR process. Uh, so CDR reports, like I said, it gives you 15 points, which is, which is so big right and it is also specific to few categories of engineers because i applied as an electronics professional engineer so if you are someone who is a electronics engineer or electrical engineer say manufacturing biomedical chemical civil engineer if you are in any of these categories uh, you will be you know getting your documents or your degree assessed from Engineers Australia. So what I'll do is I might have missed a few names as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave everything in the description box below so that you know uh, which stream you have to apply under. And uh, because uh, when it comes to computer science engineer, you will not be going through, you know, Engineers Australia, you will be going through ACS, which is Australian Computer Society. So just check that out in the description box below because that's something that is very important to determine before you get into the next steps. Okay, so before you start writing your CDR report, there are a few factors that you need to consider. So let's begin with uh, choosing the right occupation category for yourself. So the first, the, there are three main categories, right, in the occupation list. So the first one is professional engineer. And to be qualified to apply as a professional engin engineer, you need to have four years of bachelor's. Uh, in the engineering field obviously and 12 years of schooling and this is the one that I applied under and I got 15 points for this uh, so the next category is engineering technologist so if you have a three years degree in the field of engineering again and 12 years of schooling you can apply for an engineering technologist and the last uh, category is engineering associate for this, you need to have uh, two years of advanced diploma and also 12 years of schooling. So depending on your uh, qualification, just pick the right occupation category. So moving on to the next one. Okay, so the next main requirement is your English language requirement. So if you are applying for your skill assessment uh, to Engineers Australia, you have to provide an evidence of your English language competency. The different tests that they accept is um, they accept IELTS, they accept PTE and they also accept TOEFL and uh, in terms of uh, PTE to be specific, they accept PTE academic, okay? And there is a minimum of six bands that you need to have in each uh, different uh, category, which is your listening, reading, writing and speaking. So you need to have six each in all of these. And um, when I applied for my CDR, which was in 2017, they were not accepting PTE, but now they are accepting PTE, which is amazing because I always prefer PTE over IELTS or anything like that. And my score in PTE was eight each because uh, with that, I got 20 points for my PR process as well. And I would be making a video very soon on uh, how to get, uh, you know, eight each in PTE. And I'll share some of my personal tips of what I did to achieve that score. So if you would like to watch more videos like this, please do subscribe to my channel and also click the bell icon so that you get notified when I upload a next video. Okay, so let's move on to the next requirement. Before we move on to the next steps, um, if you have done your master's in Australia and it is a two years master's, you can actually skip writing the language test. So you don't have to go for PA, PTE or IELTS or any of those sorts if you have a two years degree. If you are an English speaker, local English speaker as well, you do not have to provide 
and evidence of the English test, okay? So let's move on to the next step like we were going to talk about, which is choosing the right pathway for your migration skill assessment, okay? So um, you might not even have to write a CDR report if your degree that you have from any country is falling under these important uh, you know, qualification list. So if you have a qualification that is accredited by Australian qualification, Washington Accord qualification, Sydney Accord qualification and Dublin Accord qualification, you can straight away apply uh, you know, with, for an assessment with your transcripts and everything and you do not have to write a CDR report. But if you do not uh, qualify into any of these uh, lists that I just mentioned here, you will have to write a CDR report and that happened with me as well. So I studied in India, my four years degree from Anna University, which is not in the part of uh, the thing that I mentioned before. So I had to write my uh, CDR report. Okay, so moving on to the main crux of the video, which is the different components of the CDR report. So CDR report, uh, there are three main components. One is your career episode, wherein you will be submitting three different reports. And these career episodes could be any of the projects that you have completed during your undergrad. So it could be your final year project, could be your mini project, or could be any paper presentation that you have done. You can document them into a career episode. And uh, also if you have solved any other engineering problem, uh, say you, there's a particular uh, technique that you know was not implemented before and you did something to make it work or something like that you can also use that um, experience to write a career episode for yourself or if you have worked in an, the engineering field uh, after completing your bachelor's and if there's any problem that at work if you have solved you can also use that problem and um, explain that completely in your career episodes so that's the first very important component of your CDR report. And second one is um, CPD, which is Continuous Professional Development. So this is uh, basically just a one page, uh, very simple document wherein you will be explaining about what you have done after completing your uh, course of study. Say for example, you completed your studies in 2017, you completed your bachelor's and you're applying for uh, the skill assessment in 2019. So you, what you have to do is basically you have to give a report of what you have done after you've completed your studies. Could be you attended um, any of the technical uh, seminars that takes place or you were part of a volunteering project wherein you did something uh, related to engineering field. So any of those things can uh, be a part of you know the career CPD. And also third and the most important part is the summary statement which is different depending on the different uh, occupation category. So let's go through one of uh, the one that is for the professional engineer. So we, as you can see here, this is like a table and this is a very, very, very important table because there are different competency elements uh, on this table, which has to be available in your uh, career episodes. So make sure, um, you know, you are covering all these competency elements. So this is more like a skeleton which will help you develop your CDR report, okay? So, for example, let's talk about uh, this uh, thing that I can see here, which is the uh, fluent application of your engineering tools or anything like that. So this is the competency element that they are expecting from you. So on the right-hand side, you can see uh, there is a, a career episode with the number of paragraphs that you have to uh, mention. So for example, if in your career episode, in the career episode uh, two, in the paragraph number three, if you have mentioned uh, that you have demonstrated this skill, so you're going to be just referencing that here, so just say 2.2, that's it. So that is going to give them a reference. So they're going to go through uh, this competency element in your report and it has to be available. So that's all about it. So it may sound a little bit more overwhelming now, but as you go through the format, you will find it really easy. Okay. So speaking of which, let's talk about the format of the CDR report. The size of the CDR report has to be anywhere uh, between 1000 words to a maximum of 2500 words. 
And mind you, the project report does not have to be very, very technical. And what I mean uh, when I say that is you do not have to add any of the MATLAB reports, just in case, like, just an example this is, or uh, any of the architectural diagrams. You do not have to mention a lot about the technicalities because the main reason for you to submit the CDI report is to prove uh, Engineers Australia that you have applied anything and everything that you have learned in engineering somewhere in your real life. Uh, could be in the ways of uh, doing a project, a mini project, or even working, uh, say, in a company which is similar to the nominated list that you're gonna apply for. So that's, that's all about it. And uh, talking about the format of writing the report itself, the first thing that you will be writing uh, the report is with starting with an introduction and the introduction should consist of uh, the date and place of where this whole project happened. So if you did this in second year of your engineering, you will be writing that you did this project during second year of your engineering and uh, this is where it took place, say example India or anything like that. Just mention that in the introduction which is pretty simple and straightforward. The second thing is the background. So in the background, you will be mentioning about the nature and objective of the whole project and why you were doing this and what were you trying to achieve out of this uh, whole project that you did. And also in the background, you will also be adding uh, an organizational chart because if you have done a college project, you would have done it in a group, I'm sure. So if there are four people in the group, you will be writing uh, the mem members of uh, the group, uh, mentioning the members of the group here and just draw like an organizational chart where you will be like this is the person maybe a professor or your head of department that you did your project under the guidance of and you will be writing the four team members and also your contribution and what was your role uh, in the whole project you will be mentioning a little bit of that as well and moving on to the third part which is the personal uh, engineering activity that you have done so here is so this is more like the summary of the project wherein you will give a detailed explanation about what uh, the project is about and what are the engineering theories that you're going to be using here and how you are going to apply them in this project and if you have any technical difficulties in completing this project you are going to mention that as well and you will also be writing more about your contribution so make sure there is more of words like I investigated, I researched on this project or you should you should mention more about what your involvement was in this project and how you helped the whole team achieving the end goal. Okay, so last point is uh, the summary which is like more like a conclusion wherein you will write about uh, how the experience was throughout the project and what you achieved out of it. So that's more about the ending and I'm going to give you a sample which is my personal uh, CDI report that I'm going to be a link in the description box below. Please make sure you do not copy the same thing because it's not going to help you because my CDR thing is all done already because uh, plagiarism is not allowed even if you're trying to copy a document uh, from anywhere in the internet they use a really strong system which will um, you know find out that this information is not genuine and you have copy pasted it from somewhere so make sure you don't do it but it's always um, not bad to use a format and just try to you know paraphrase the words it's always good to have a format with you so that you know you know what needs to be done so i am going to link that in the description box below feel free to have a look at it and uh, yeah use it for your own benefit I know the video is getting super lengthy but it is really important for you to know all this information and I'd like to end this video quickly with giving you a short summary of the things that you require to start your process for the skill assessment. So number one thing is that you need to uh, pick the right occupation category. So after that's done, you need to have uh, the CDR report ready with all the three components that I told you, the three career episodes, your CPD. Um, statement and also your summary statement and then your educational transcripts or your um, uh, work experience documents if you're going to be using uh, any of your work related experience to write your CDR report so evidence of employment will also be required and also your uh, English test uh, assessment and I'm going to give you a link below with all the details about the fees and how long the process takes and the turnaround time for their um, reply to you after you have applied your CDR. So all that information is available in the link below and also to give you a disclaimer, I am not a registered agent to provide you on any uh, immigration or PR advice. This is just my personal experience and I am just trying to make this video to help you guys out 
with any information that you require because when I was going through uh, this stage of my life when in, wherein I was trying to find some information on Syria report there's not much that I could find so that's the whole point of making this video and um, I hope you guys find it helpful and if you like the video please give it a big thumbs up it will give me motivation to make more videos in the future and if you have any questions or any suggestions for more videos please leave it in the comment section below as well and I will see you again next week and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe to my channel now and I will see you again very soon with another video until then take care bye bye